Now, I doubt they danced all night and played all day, but the WWE does know how to shake it up. I'm Chris Wolvey, the wrestling blogger who always tells it like it is. So before I start, since Lacey Evans is only going after the Raw Women's Championship, that means Becky hasn't unified the women's title, so I'm back to a top five women for each brand. So, there you go. So, another superstar shakeup is in the books. Most of the guys from NXT that got called up over the last five months finally have solid homes, and the Cruiserweight division got a bit slimmer. Like me. Do I think that one brand has an advantage over the other? Well, let's take it bit by bit and work it out logically. Or as logically as one can take the WWE. <clears throat> Pardon. Let's start with the NXT years that I mentioned before. Now, it seems to me like Raw got the better part of the deal in that respect. Uh, yeah, sure, uh, SmackDown was able to snag Lars Sullivan and Heavy Machinery, but hopefully EC3 will overcome the thrashing he took from Braun Strowman and amount to something. And having Aleister Black and Ricochet on one show will definitely help them in the long run. And Raw also brought in the War Raiders. At, I mean, the Viking experience. <laughs> And just when you thought the gimmick era of the 90s was dead and forgotten, right? Still, as current and soon-to-be former, I'm sure, NXT Tag Team Champs, they should make a big impact. They already did last week. <laughs> now, each brand dragged in a former Cruiserweight Champion in their slow but steady march to put 205 Live out of its misery and take that ugly purple belt with it. This one's pretty much a draw because both Buddy Murphy and Cedric Alexander are young, spry, and ready to make an impact. With the Lucha House Party and Ali leading the way for them, they should make for interesting secondary title contenders. As for the tag teams, Raw is on lock. And now we know why the Usos lost the SmackDown tag titles to the Hardys. So, just so Zack Ryder and Curtis Hawkins and the Usos didn't have to swap titles. No tag teams came to SmackDown. Well, I mean, except Heavy Machinery. In fact, they split up Team Glorious, which I hoped they would have done months ago, by moving Chad Gable to SmackDown. And at least Bobby Roode can go back to being a Ric Flair clone by himself. Then again, as said before, Heavy Machinery might help the SmackDown tag division. I hope. As for the ladies, only Nikki Cross is still unsigned, as it were. In fact, I couldn't even see her on any of the rosters on the WWE website. Not even NXT. So we'll have to see where that, uh, where, what happens to that nutcase. But SmackDown definitely had it all over Raw for this division. Sure, Lacey Evans finally settled on Raw, but SD got Bailey, now that the boss wants out, Ember Moon, Liv Morgan, and most importantly, Pirate Princess Kyrie Sane. Not true, I may not like that Sane is being teamed with Asuka. I think they'd still do better separately, but Having two phenomenal Far Eastern ladies tearing through the ranks together? I'd say you better watch out, Iconics, because it looks like your reign won't last. <laughs> now let's get to the men who switch sides. Seems to me the only major players that came to Raw from SmackDown were AJ Styles and The Miz. Obviously, the feud between Miz and Shane McMahon wasn't resolved at WrestleMania when they were both on SmackDown, so now it's crossed over the Raw. And AJ? I mean, what'll happen to the house that AJ Styles built now that the head of construction is in a new real estate area? Of course, AJ will have to wait for Seth Rollins to drop the Universal title to go after it. Unless one or the other does a heel turn. 
As for those who emigrated to the blue brand, Roman Reigns and Elias seem to be the alpha dogs in the new lineup. And while Elias is still hamming it up trying to play his guitar without interruption, he still hasn't shown what he can really do in the ring. Meanwhile, Roman seems to be happy with the new yard and is no doubt looking to take back the WWE Championship he gained three times before. But again, unless Reigns properly turns heel or Kofi Kingston turns on his new day compadres, that won't happen for a while. Meanwhile, Roman can at least send his leukemia-free fist into Mr. McMahon's face a few more times. Oh, and let's not forget Finn Balor bringing the Intercontinental Championship to SmackDown. Finn has been on Raw since the brand split, so maybe a change of scenery will do him good. However, officially, this leaves Raw without a secondary title. Since Samoa Joe was not announced to be taking the United States title to Raw. That might change in the near future, though. I heard Joe couldn't make the trip to Montreal due to the flu, and he's expected to start a feud with Strowman in the near future, so maybe a trade will be announced soon? The rest? Uh, not quite as noteworthy. Raw gets Rey Mysterio, who apparently isn't retiring after that beatdown by Joe a few weeks ago, Eric Young from the much maligned Sandy, and Naomi who is being dragged in by her hubby. But one possible surprise is Andrade and Zelina Vega. After sending Finn Balor to SmackDown, between his t with, to Smackdown with his title between his legs, I have high hopes for Andrade on Raw. Maybe once the U.S. title is brought over, he'll be able to get in line for a shot at that. The only other people brought to SmackDown are Apollo Crews and Mickey James, and I doubt either one will make it to the next WrestleMania. I'm sorry. So, Raw has advantages for tag, tag teams and NXT promoters, and SD led with women and switched men. Only Andrade puts Raw slightly ahead in my books. Slightly. All in all, I'd say it was a good shakeup, though I do so wish next year's would be more like the WWE drafts of the first dual brand era. Also, I wouldn't have minded Corey Graves being told to stay on one show, for goodness sake. But only time will tell if these moves will help or hurt the superstars involved. Quite frankly, I still can't get my head wrapped around the Viking experience. I'm Chris Wolver, the wrestling blogger who always tells it like it is. See ya.